Welcome to Listen by Jean Ginsberg. This audio experience and podcast is all about social media, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, and interviews with top entrepreneurs in the digital and social space. I am your host, Jean Ginsberg, digital marketing expert, number one best selling author, and award winning entrepreneur. I will be sharing with you strategies, tips, and tactics on how to grow your business and your social media following. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, Jean Ginsberg here and welcome to another episode of Listen by Jean Ginsberg. Very excited today. Someone I spoke to a few months ago and has decided to come on the podcast is Joe Michaels from Haptics. How are you? I'm doing great, Jean. How are you? I'm wonderful because I you're here today and this is a topic that I'm fascinated about your company and I'd love you know, to hear about it. Of course, I've heard a little bit about it before, but our audiences have not. So I would love to hear a little bit about, uh, well, more about the company. But before we get into that, I also like to also have our audiences kind of get a feel for the context of your background. So usually at the first question I always ask is, tell us about your background. Sure. Um, I think I've been pretty lucky in my career because I've been at the leading edge of a number of big trends in the technology and media space. Uh, I worked in television right after college, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then I went to business school and I started one of the early e-commerce companies, which was really great. This was in the you know mid to late 90s. And um, after moving to Microsoft, I worked there for 14 years and was able to work in, you know, early in a lot of cool fields like premium uh, digital content and, um, you know, online video. This is, we were doing a lot of YouTube before YouTube um, and original uh, series uh, for, you know, video productions for, for, for digital media. And um, then I got really excited about virtual reality. And when I left Microsoft, I moved to VR. So, um, you know, that's, that's been my, my path and um, it's, it's, it's been a whole lot of fun. Wow, so definitely I love hearing that cutting edge technology. Okay, so tell us about then what you're working on now because I feel like this is definitely cutting edge. Yeah, well, it's a little bit science fiction. Some people can't believe that we're actually working on this, but we are the leading company that does haptic technology for virtual reality and robotics. So that means we recreate the feeling of a sense of touch. Uh, I did a little research and I learned that haptics was originally a Greek term um, and it was invented in like the late 1800s. That's how long people have been you know, fascinated with this concept of uh, simulating the feeling of touch. And most people know the word haptics from their mobile phones, you know, when, when there's a buzz, when you, when you've hit the key on the screen and other people know about, um, you know, game controllers and how they rumble. If your car crashes in, in a video game, there's a rumble and it symbolically tells you something happened. Um, what my company Haptex has been at for the last nine years is a more advanced version of that technology that can make you feel like you are touching virtual digital objects. Uh, we're starting with a pair of gloves called Haptex gloves, and we have a vision to expand that beyond your hands to the entire body. So your full body feels immersed in um, any kind of virtual environment. And we've expanded beyond VR to robotics recently, which has been absolutely amazing uh, operating robots from afar using our gloves. So this idea of wearables for virtual reality and robotics is what we do. And uh, We've, we've, I've been at the company for five years and learned so, so much. A lot to unpack there. So I think we'll take it a little bit once, one piece at a time. Okay, so uh, tell me about some of, I guess, tell me about why this company was even started. Uh, let's start there. Sure. The founder was uh, an amazing uh, person named Jake Rubin. And uh, he was a, I, I hope you wouldn't mind me saying this, but he was a dropout uh, from college after I think less than one semester, if I'm not mistaken. And he really was just so passionate about his ideas. He, he decided to start this company to, in his original vision, um, uh, enable him to play games more realistically, imagining himself inside computer games in, in, a, in sort of a metaverse environment and being able to, you know, feel weapons and uh, creatures and other people 
And, uh, you know, when I came on board uh, in 2016, you know, he and I kind of pivoted away from entertainment and that kind of thing toward enterprise uses, um, government, military, um, enterprise, industrial, even universities. Um, there are so many people who need to do things. And I, I can talk about the use cases, but like training, virtual training. And we realized how valuable touch feedback, realistic touch feedback can be when you're trying to train someone to use their hands in a virtual environment, or you wanna help a designer of an automobile design that car um, using their hands, or you know, robotics, you need touch feedback to be able to control a robot across a long distance. So that's what we're all about is, is enabling you to feel something that doesn't really exist with realism. So tell me about some of the use cases uh, or some of the applications of, uh, of your company's product. Sure. Um, you know, I think the biggest one right now is training. So when you are trying to train someone who uses their hands, this could be everything from a very advanced, you know, skilled uh, use of the hands like surgery or flying a plane, or it could be uh, maintenance of equipment or it could be you know, really anything um, where you're training someone how to, how to behave in an environment and they need to use their body. Uh, it's, it, we have learned that it's, it's expensive and it's sometimes dangerous um, and, and not always that effective to try to pull down all the facilities and move trainees in and train them on, on real equipment. It's a lot easier, the dream is, to do it in virtual reality. All you do is put on a headset and you can see this and even hear the world in 3D. And um, you can learn you know, all about things in a more realistic way. But if you wanna learn not just about the skill, but you wanna learn how to do it, you need to bring in haptic gloves like ours. Um, and, and if you can feel the world, feel the steering wheel as you're training someone to drive a car or a forklift or a plane, uh, if you can feel the, the surgical instruments, or if you're training nurses or doctors, there are so many different things they need to touch. Um, if you're training someone to maintain a motorcycle engine, they're using their hands constantly. Training people to work on power lines, it's dangerous you know, for them. It, it takes two years to trust a, a new trainee before they go up in the bucket and work on a live power line. Imagine if you could train them in virtual reality and teach their, their body muscle memory. So they actually learn how to develop the right skills um, physically. And that's what, what I think our biggest use case is today. Uh, the, the military has been very excited about this. And so we're really, really um, fired up to help them. And then design is the other use case um, in VR. We have automakers all over the world who are um, frustrated with how long it takes between the time they envision what their design looks like and when they get to actually drive it and try it. And so they've, they've hired us to help them feel their 3D models. And they do studies, reach studies to see if the you know, glove box is a safe distance from the driver. They do ergonomic studies. They, they check to see if something's beautiful, if it works well. So it's really um, cool to, to work with uh, companies like Nissan and Volkswagen and you know, some US automakers uh, on that. And then robotics is a whole other field that we can get into that's been great. Yeah, I'd love to hear about robotics. So, I mean, those are really interesting use cases. I'm also thinking like maybe medical for like people who can't or have, you know, or have maybe issues with hands or feeling or prosthetics. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of like a different, a lot of different things, but what, yeah. What about other um, use cases? Robotics. Yeah. Well, uh, we, partnered uh, a few years ago with a company in the UK called Shadow Robot Company. And they make the world's most advanced robot hand. It's very humanoid. It's got five digits, the fingers move naturally. And, um, and, and a company called Tangible Research that, that um, was working with, with Shadow. And they were saying, you know, it, it would be really nice if, if a human could actually feel what the robot hand is feeling. And so we started experimenting with that. And um, quickly we learned it's pretty effective. If you get sensors on the tips of robot fingers, from any distance away, you can wear haptex gloves and you can control the robot hand very precisely and you can feel what the robot hand is feeling. And now, you know, the, you fast forward from that moment, we started working together to a time when we let Jeff Bezos try the gloves, uh, the haptex gloves 
to control this tactile telerobot project that we've worked uh, on. And uh, he loved it. And luckily, thank goodness, we had someone catch that moment on video. And it kind of went viral because Jeff Bezos made this crazy gesture. Um, and uh, so we, we've been able to take the, those, those robotic developments and um, we have customers now in Asia and, and the US and, and a growing number of places. And they're looking to, to do this teleoperation of robots where you can take workers out of dangerous or, or difficult jobs uh, and locations and have them safely interact with things through robots. It's, uh, it's been amazing. Yes, I mean, I think that there's so many things that you can do with robots and, and haptics gloves. Uh, I think the applications could be like innumerable out there. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, you mentioned medicine, and I thought that was a really insightful point because think about how there just aren't really enough skilled doctors to go around and be in every community in the United States, for example. Um, and so we think about telehealth. And if you could go into your local drugstore um, and there was a, a nice comfortable room and you know, if basically a doctor who is the leading expert on X or Y or Z, you know, could, could check you and, and you know, um, give you care that's more than just through a TV monitor, but it's actually um, feeling your, your situation, your body and, and maybe even administering some basic care that's a, that's a really exciting area. And, and we've also thought about uh, what you mentioned, which is sort of therapeutic uses. Um, we have a spider, that, a virtual spider that's terrified some of the people that, we, that have tried our equipment. And, and we thought, well, what if we, that could be useful? What if we could help people with phobias um, get over that by using virtual feeling, not just, uh, not, you know, not, not always the real thing. Yeah, and then going back to the doctor, I mean, one of the things I've heard kind of, I think, in non-reality, this is still, you know, probably science fiction, not science fiction, but on the verge of, of science fiction and reality is, um, what if the doctor is not there, right? So using, like, remote gloves or remote hands, robotic hands to perform a surgery with a doctor that might be in a different continent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you can extend that, uh, you know, to um, military doctors treating people through robots on the battlefield. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's really exciting. So, you know, to be fair, you know, we're, we're, we've taken several steps on, on a long journey to, you know, with that long journey being where we all need to go for, for this technology to be performing perfectly. And so our job is to get it out in the market and get people using it and trying it. And we will improve it until it's difficult to distinguish between the virtual and the real. Right. And how long do you think is that going to take? Is that uh, something that's coming soon or is that going to be a long, a more of a longer term strategy? Well, um, I think you have to look at it on a few different levels. One is how quickly the technology will be there. The other level is how quickly, you know, we'll find customers to really use it and adopt it and make it mainstream. And then, you know, uh, how long it'll take to, to sort of for, for the world to accept it. Um, and I think our technology is going to be there a lot faster than people realize. We're, we're already most of the way there. Um, you know, I, and when, when you look at the commercial side, I like to joke, you know, our goal is to stay alive till 25. Like I, you know, I, that's a little bit of an extreme <laughs> statement, but, but I just think by, by the time we hit about 2025, you know, we, we will all be expecting virtual and augmented reality and the haptics that make it, you know, tactile to be part of our lives. And uh, your phrase about staying alive till 2025, what happens after 2025? Do we all live, get to live forever? <laughs> if I knew that, um, <laughs> I would... <laughs> <laughs> I would be retired uh, in Tahiti right now. No, um, I don't know. I, I doubt it. But um, and I, in a way, I kind of hope not. Talking philosophy for a second. But um, but yeah, I, I think amazing things are coming. Some will go, you know, really fast. Others are going to take a long time. But but we're moving in that direction. Right. And so, kind of t taking your points that you just mentioned, and and maybe turning them around a little bit. So, what do you think are the biggest challenges then to getting to to these things that we, you know? these milestones that we're looking towards. Yeah, um, I was chatting with my friend Melissa last night and she said the funniest thing, which I absolutely love. She said, 
Um, everything that I want to go slowly is going too fast, and everything that I want to go quickly is going too slowly. I um, agree and with so, that you point know, it's, it's, at many levels. <laughs> I just thought that was the best thing I'd ever heard. Um, and it's true. And so, you know, that's that's the biggest challenge is trying to get the speed right. So, you know, it, it took us a long time to, you know, sort of convince people to, to invest in the company enough so that we could really make the technological advancements. And, you know, that took a long time. And we've raised $31 million to date as a company. Um, and uh, so that's gone well. Um, it would have been, you know, I would have liked it to go a lot faster. Um, and so the big challenge now is um, convincing people to try it. Um, a lot of, I've learned that a lot of corporate America is, they're, they're cautious until it's ready. And I mean, ready and mature. They don't know if they're going to adopt it. And so getting more companies comfortable testing, experimenting, yeah. developing, um, you know, with, with companies like mine, that's, that's a big challenge. And then, you know, and then it's getting all the applications developed for any technology like mine. You can't just be a tool, you know, you, you've got to be part of a solution. So bringing lots of great companies along with us to help with, with the other aspects of the solutions, that's, that's another big challenge for us. And fortunately, I think all that is going well. Right. Yeah, that, I think that's the big one, right? It's just how do you get everybody to even understand the technology and the applications? I mean, of course, there's some uh, industries that are, you know, that are getting the gist of it that are the early adopters of like, like the military. And I, I can see that being the case. But yeah, I think the layman is just trying to even like, this is a whole new industry that has never really existed. Maybe we've seen it in, in, in sci-fi movies, but it's not a reality, you know, like for most of us, it has never been a reality. Um, and so we can, you know, think about it, but it's like hard to, I think it even took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around how does that work? What is what do you do with it? He's like, why is it important? Things like that. Yeah, well, when you find, you know, when you develop a great piece of equipment and a, a, a killer app or two, um, you know, it has a way of breaking through. And I mean, we all didn't think about smartphones until everyone did. And, right. you know, the, and I just think, well, virtual reality, you know, I, for all the criticism Facebook is getting, you know, um, I think that they, they're investing in this space and it's lifting the industry in, in many good ways. And, you know, more of that will really lead to where we, you know, where we all need to go. Right. Well, it sounds like Facebook is changing the name. I wonder if, yeah, by the time this, uh, this, this, yeah. this podcast uh, airs, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if there'll be a new name. We'll see. I was like, what? Facebook is changing their name. I just read it about it this morning. So yeah, by the time this, air, uh, this podcast airs, it might be, completely different whatever Mark Zuckerberg comes up with comes up with. Well, I was pretty shocked about that actually I have to say I was like what it's been around for like almost 20 years and now they're changing their name I guess they're looking for a different demographic <laughs> um so uh marketing as a as a topic that's near and dear to my heart how do you market a, a technology or a thing that has never existed before for people to understand that this is something that can be a reality. Yeah. Um, the fact is you need to um, work on, a, a, I always like to think of things on a few different levels. One, you need to get it out to as many people to try it as possible. You know, um, um, you know, virtual reality and haptics is something that you, once you put it on, and once you experience it, it opens your eyes. Um, even people who you know are super smart and experienced in other areas, they just don't always conceive of what's possible until they try it. And then it's like they, they, they've taken off a blindfold. So um, we try to get it out uh, at trade shows and go to customer sites. And you know, so that, that's really important for us. Um, and getting uh, people who are influential um, and well-regarded to, to, to talk about it that's a really important thing. Um, I care a lot about what certain influencers say and think about the world. And so I want, I want them to know about Haptex. And that's, that's been a big help for us, that people help us tell our story. Um, and, you know, the other thing is just to have a brand that, you know, that, that stands for something clear. 
Um, you know, we, and, and then work super hard day in and day out to, to really own that, um, that positioning and, and support it and, um, and make it easy for people to understand it and, and re, re-share it. So on all those levels, you know, that, that's what we do. Um, and, you know, we, we work with really good people who do marketing with us. And, um, and we, you know, we just, we just love doing it. Having a passion, I think, shows through. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like education is going to be like the main point in the beginning, right? It's like just educating the, the public or just even your end user or your consumer or your client, a prospective client, about what does this even do and how does this even work. So, yeah, I, I can, I, it's definitely, I mean, I would think it's uh, to me, I mean, as a marketer, no, nothing's really a challenge. I mean, everything's always a challenge and nothing's a challenge. So it's like, I can see this being a, more of a hump, I guess, because it's like you have to come up with creative ways on how do you let the end user know that this even exists and what and why you use it and the applications for it. Well, there's nothing like a global pandemic to add another layer of challenge to something that you need to get out in front of people and let them try when, when none of us was traveling and, um, you know, and, and we had to do everything on video. And, and over, you know, the internet and, and, you know, video conferencing, we found a way. I mean, we, we adapted. We, you know, we, we used video and testimonials and slides and, and our storytelling capabilities to, to share what we, what we could with, with our customers and with the world. And I would say, I mean, we've, we've, we've done pretty well. I've been happy with the way it's gone, but I'm really itching to get back out into the world. And we've started we have a team in Dubai this week. Um, we'll be in Santa Clara, California uh, shortly, in Orlando after that, in Las Vegas after that. So, so we're we're getting back out into the world, and it feels really good to be meeting with people again. Back on the road. I mean, it's that time now, right? I, I it seems like trade shows and conferences are coming back finally. Yeah, right. maybe not everywhere, but it sounds like they're coming back around a lot of places. I'm surprised California actually. Um, I thought that would probably take a while. Yeah, well, this is a trade show that uh, that um, <laughs> I just had to laugh because I looked at their list of speakers at the trade show and I, I, my finger hurt. I was scrolling for so long to go through the list. I think there's just natural pent up demand. You yeah. know, everyone wants to speak there. Everyone wants to attend there. Um, it's almost like an explosion of, of interest, um, you know, after almost two years of not being able to do anything. Right. Yeah. People are so eager. Um, awesome. Well, last question. Uh, it's kind of a, almost a wild card question. Uh, what's your prediction for the industry? And that could be specifically your industry, or it could be self-driving cars, terraforming Mars, ro- robotics. <laughs> I mean, whatever, whatever's top of mind for you. Living to be 150? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I suppose it depends what industry you mean. But, you know, I, I, would, I would say the industry I know the best is kind of the immersive technology industry. And you know the the overall thing I would say is that I think uh, computing over time has gotten more social, and it's gotten more immersive. And I think that's going to continue, um, which is maybe why you know you see Mark Zuckerberg so excited about you know the Oculus side of his company. Um, but you know it, that's where we're all going. And so when I say more immersive, I mean you, your expectations rise. You you want when you you know we have a feature in our technology where. Um, you can not only see one another, you know, in a virtual environment, you can feel one another, you can high five and shake hands. And, and I think once that breaks through, you'll just expect to not only let I me mean, at the end of every, you know, zoom call, we all wave at each other goodbye, but, you know, um, you know, at some point we'll, we'll be able to, to shake hands and, 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 you know, I think everything will get more immersive and uh, not just in social applications, but productive, you know, productivity apps, um, you know, you'll be able to work on the same designs using your hands. You'll be able to, um, you know, to, to reach through a screen and, and draw on a whiteboard or, or play with a model. And so I just, I'm very excited to start realizing where we can go as an industry and everything gets more immersive and more tactile. Right. I mean, the possibilities are endless. I was just thinking like, what's the end goal? And I'm like, I don't think there was really an end goal because it's, it's such a, like a uh, technology that can move. That we, I don't even know what the end might be. It might like it, we, for me, it's like inconceivable at this point. Like because it, it can, there's so many things that it can that it can do over the, the next you know 50, 100, 200 years. I mean, it could be, it's like 
I, I can't even fathom this. Yeah, we picture like this uh, system where we kind of joke that you can be so tethered, you're untethered. Like you, you know, like you could be in place, but you could be, you know, if, if, if it's capturing all of your movements and you feel any world or any, any sort of 3D environment, you could in one small space do anything. You could go skydiving, you could wrestle with a dinosaur, you could go hang out with your friends, you know, it's just, there's a vision down the line that, that sounds exciting and maybe a little, you know, just dystopian too. Um, you've got to make sure we get it right. Uh, but but it, it's a pretty, pretty powerful and exciting vision when, when you could do that stuff. Well, to, my dystopian thoughts just came up is downloading your, your consciousness onto a being that then can feel everything that you guys are going to create eventually in like the next 50 years. And then we can all live forever. I think you need to write a science fiction movie about that. <laughs> I'm not a writer for, for sure. I'm a, I'm a marketer, not a writer. I mean, I can come up with some marketing ideas for that, but definitely. Um, but, you know, that, again, that's, a, that's something that I think hasn't been thought of in the, in the future about downloading your consciousness. I guess you're just going to be the, you guys are going to be the vehicle for that, right? The, so the long as you can vehicle. feel the, yes, those things, <laughs> right? um, we're happy. And I, that, that makes me a little nervous, the thought of, you know, downloading someone's consciousness and, and brain. I, I'll, uh, I'll probably be first in line to suggest that we're cautious about that. But, uh, but the touch aspects of it are so cool. I'm, I'm all for those. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this was great. I loved having this conversation. Last question is how can our audiences get in touch with you or haptics? Um, Let's hear that. Yeah, so LinkedIn is the social media channel that we are most active on. If you look for HaptX, H-A-P-T-X on LinkedIn, you'll find us. Um, we're also pretty active on Twitter. Um, and, you know, we, we're at every one of these trade shows that has to do with immersive technology, and we'd love to show it to you. Um, I'd be interested to connect with you personally, find me on LinkedIn, and, um, you know, it'd be great to, to get to know you. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was great. I loved learning more about this. I mean, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface here, but this, is, this has been such an eye-opening conversation for me. So thank you so much for being here. You're so welcome, Gene. Thank you for having me.